Hi everyone, welcome back to another video of this course. In this video, we are going to start creating our style guide, okay, or our design system, which is very important when you want to work on a complex project, okay? So at first, it may seem that there is lots of work to do, however, it's worth it. So first of all, we need an artboard, okay? As you can see, I have created a MacBook Pro artboard, and I'm going to change its name to Colors nice then let's go ahead and insert a rectangle like this i'm gonna increase the corner radius to make it rounded let me zoom in let me make it smaller the width is going to be 5 and the height is going to be 64 for now and i'm going to change the color to 41 35 and f3 pretty nice then let me move it to the left side a little bit and here i'm gonna insert a text and let's write colors I'm going to use SF Pro Rounded, pretty nice, and let's increase its size to 24 points, like this, and it's going to be regular, however, I'm going to change the color code to 4A, 4A, and 4A, alright, let me align it vertically, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, I'm going to group that, fantastic so now we need to create our sections because in colors we have different sections for instance we have primary colors we have accent colors and we have semantic colors of course you can have background colors as well however in this tutorial we are going to create primary accent and semantic colors okay so now i need a line like this i'm gonna hold shift and I'm going to change the color to E4, E4, and E4, okay, like this. Then I need to add a text, and let's write primary colors. I'm going to choose the same color as I used for this text. So let's copy and paste this hex color code. Fantastic. I'm going to align them to the left, and its bottom padding is going to be 8 pixels. Let's group them, and I'm going to call it primary colors fantastic it's pretty nice then I need to create a square here like this and let's make it rounded fantastic then we need to change the color to 41 35 and F3 actually this is the color that I want to use in this tutorial so you can use different colors for your design system and keep in mind that you can always change them so if you're not sure why and how I choose this color it just depends on your project and it takes some time to understand how you can create your colors palette properly okay but now we just want to focus on creating our design system and I'm going to show you how you can do it properly so the colors do not matter all right its top padding is going to be 16 pixels I'm going to duplicate that like this with a 16 pixel left padding once again duplicate that and once again okay so we have four different squares I'm gonna select the second one and I'm gonna decrease its opacity to 75 percent like this and the third one I'm gonna change it to 50 percent and the last one let's set it to 25 percent okay the reason that I changed the opacity is because sometimes we need to have different states of each color. For instance, if you are creating a button, it may have different states, such as active, deactive, hover, etc. Okay? For instance, if you are using this color for the active state, you can use other colors, such as this one, for the hover state. Okay? So it is quite necessary to have different versions of your color. Alright, now let's select the first square and I'm going to go ahead and click on these four dots and then click on this plus button and here I'm going to write colors slash primary slash purple 100% and create style okay fantastic and then the next one colors primary purple 75% I'm going to copy it and then the next one it's going to be 50% and the last one is going to be 25% 
like this. Okay, fantastic. All right, now let's select all of them, group them, and it's going to be primary colors. And let's hold shift and click on this primary colors title. Once again, group them, and I'm gonna name it primary colors. Then I need to duplicate it like this, and let's change this name to accent colors. And I think it's a good idea to decrease the font size a little bit. For instance, let's set it to 20, this one as well. Now it's better. And now let's select the first one. First, we need to detach it from its style and the same thing for others. So now let's select the first one and then change the color code to B, E, 5, 2, F and 2. Pretty good. Let's copy this. And I'm going to paste it for others. Fantastic. And now we need to create the color style for these colors as well. So let's repeat the procedure. Here we need to write colors, accent, slash, let's write purple one. And this one as well. Colors, accent, purple two. Let's copy this. And here is going to be purple 3. And the last one should be purple 4. You can name them as you want. However, keep it as organized as possible. Okay. Then I'm going to rename this group to accent colors. Fantastic. And also this one. And once again, duplicate them. And here is going to be semantic colors. First, we need to detach it from its style. And we don't need this last one because we are going to have only three different versions. So let's select the first one. I'm going to change the color code to double F, CF, and 5C. Okay, I'm going to copy this. And let's paste it for others. All right, now let's go ahead and create our color styles. So let's write colors, semantic, and let's write orange one. I'm going to copy this. The next one is going to be orange two. And the last one, orange three. Great. We need one more semantic color. So I'm going to duplicate them like this. Again, we need to detach them from their style like this. And let's select the first one. I'm going to set the color code to double zero, 84 and F4. Okay, let's copy this and paste it for others. Fantastic. Now, the last step is to create our color style. So let's write colors, semantic, blue one, and then blue two, and finally, blue three. All right, guys, we are almost done. However, I'm going to show you something and we need to customize our color styles a little bit. OK, so now that we have created these color styles with different amount of opacity, we will have some problems if we decide to use these colors on top of a colorful background. OK, now that we are using them on a white background, we cannot understand the difference. However, I'm going to show you something. So let's create a rectangle here, okay? And I'm going to move it down right below our last group. And if I move it, you can see that actually our colors are changing because we changed their opacity. But we need to do one more step. Of course, for the first colors, nothing changes because the opacity of this first layer is 100%. So how can we fix this? The best way is to choose each one. For example, this one, then go to color style, then edit style and choose the eyedropper and click on this color and it's done. So let's do the same thing for all of them. There we go. It's a great technique for creating your color styles because sometimes you don't have all the colors code. So in this case, you can use this technique and then you can change the colors. So I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. All right. And it's done. So now if I create the same rectangle once again, like this, and I'm going to put it right below our first group. 
you can see that our colors are not changing. So from now on, even if you use a colorful background on your design, your colors stay intact. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. So see you then.